So the topic I was assigned uh, is pacritinib, which is an oral JAK2, FLT3, IREC1 inhibitor uh, that's been in clinical development for many years now uh, that has available uh, published data in the phase three setting. And what's unique about this drug, and this was, um, this was seen early on in the clinical development, is that it appears to be less myelosuppressive than many of the other JAK inhibitors that have been tested and are approved for the treatment of myelofibrosis. Um, it is a selective JAK2 inhibitor. It spares JAK1. Um, and perhaps inhib inhibiting IREC1 um, and the IL-1 beta inflammasome uh, may also uh, differentiate this drug um, from other JAK inhibitors. But what was um, clearly seen in the PERSIST studies, which were the randomized phase three studies comparing pacritinib uh, to best available therapy, um, excluding uh, ruxolitinib uh, in patients who were ruxolitinib naive and PERSIST1, and then comparing pacritinib um, at two different doses to best available therapy in patients with low platelets, less than 100,000, uh, who could have seen ruxolitinib previously and get ruxolitinib in a BAT arm was persist too. And what was important in these studies uh, when all was said and done is that patients with low platelets, particularly uh, extremely low platelets, so less than 50,000, uh, were able to tolerate the drug uh, from a myelosuppressive standpoint um, and there were spleen and symptom responses that were seen in these patients. And that becomes really important when considering the current armamentarium for the treatment of myelofibrosis, in which the current JAK inhibitors, ruxolitinib and fedratinib, are approved um, broadly for myelofibrosis. Um, but um, if you look at the label carefully, it's really for patients uh, based on the clinical trials with a baseline put the count of 50,000 or greater. Um, so there's an unmet need of these patients with extreme thrombocytopenia. And extreme thrombocytopenia has been shown in multiple studies to be associated with poor survival, high transformation rates of acute leukemia, um, and is a independent prognostic variable uh, that's incorporated in the DIPS plus, for example. And it represents an unmet need. Um, and these patients um, often are the myelodepletive phenotype of um, low blood counts, um, they often don't have massive splenum megaly, um, and they um, have limited treatment options. So pacritinib would offer uh, the potential to treat these patients with low platelets, um, and I think that's what the PERSIST-2 and PERSIST-1 studies actually showed when you look at these um, patients with platelets less than 50,000. The PAC-203 study was really a reflexive study in response to an initial clinical hole that was put uh, on the drug by the FDA due to concerns of increased mortality risk um, due to bleeding and cardiovascular events. And when you look at the data very carefully and as uh, published, um, there really isn't any difference in survival curves. And the, the rates of these events, uh, both cardiovascular and bleeding, are low, are infrequent, um, and often um, um, understandable considering the patients that are being treated. Um, and the PAC-203 really was a dose finding study, a phase two study looking at 200 milligrams twice daily, which was the winning arm in PERSIST-2, um, and uh, 100 uh, twice daily, 100 milligrams once daily, uh, and it was very PK driven. Um, and what that study showed, I think very nicely, is that if you look at the patients, again, with plates less than 50,000, at the 200 milligram twice daily in the arm, there's nearly 20% response rate on uh, insulin volume reduction of 35% uh, or greater. So again, confirming the activity in this low patient, low platelet patient population, uh, as well as confirming safety. And what that study did to its credit was um, optimize the patients or minimize um, the risk um, and the inclusion of patients that would be at high risk for bleeding events, uh, those that are on anticoagulation, um, or those um, that are at high risk for cardiovascular events. Um, so it was a, a trial that I think served its point um, and now has led to the Pacifica study, which is the registration uh, randomized phase three study of pacritinib at 200 milligrams twice daily compared to best available therapy um, in patients with a baseline platelet count of less than 50,000. Best available therapy in the study would include ruxolinib um, at five milligrams once a day or twice daily. Um, so this is an important study that is ongoing, I would encourage those in the community, physicians and patients, to consider enrollment in this important study uh, as it would allow, uh, hopefully, eventually access uh, to many patients with low platelets, either upfront or second line, uh, 
to correct them. 